It's 21 miles across the English Channel. It is the swimming equivalent of Mount Everest. These six strong women make up the channel for ALS team. They decided not only to swim from England to France, but to touch France and come all the way back. A 42 mile trek, all in an effort to help a friend and raise money for ALS research. They've trained in the dark and through the cold for the past two years. And their goal is not only complete the swim, but to set a world record. They want to do it faster than any other women relay team ever before. Come, follow them on their journey as they are swimming towards a cure. It is about 4.30 a.m. We're here at the Dover Marina and we are just about ready to get on the boat to head out for our swim. So you swim the English Channel. It's sort of like the natural big challenge in swimming. What we want to do is just grab the names of all the swimmers and everybody else that's on board tonight. And swimmer number six. Mercer, M-E-R-C-E-R, and I'm 44. Okay, all good. So all we have to say now is good luck, and um, let's hope uh, we bust this. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. How does she know when to start swimming? She's gonna swim to shore, yeah. and then she's the very first swimmer. How does she know when she's going? Just uh, basically wait for the horn, and uh, we'll, we'll blow the horn, kick off the sirens. It'll be pretty obvious when you're doing the start. <laughs> all right. Swimming the English Channel has always been discussed between these friends, but it wasn't until Amanda Mercer paired it with a worthy cause that it started to become a reality. Hey guys, how you doing? Bob Shaney is a friend and neighbor of Amanda. In 2008, Bob was diagnosed with ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. Right now, there is no cure. Amanda Mercer is a proud alum of Michigan State she, along with other Ann Arbor residents, sits on the board of Ann Arbor Active Against ALS. A team of Spartans and Wolverines and others pitching in for a noble cause. Their first major fundraiser is swimming the English Channel. When Amanda, I guess it was probably a year and a half ago or so when she told me about this idea and she told me via email and initially, you know, it didn't really sink in at that point. I thought, oh, wow, this sounds great. This is ambitious. Um, you know, it was a ways off that they were going to do it and I thought, wow, this is great. And then as the months kind of turned by and really probably three or four months ago where they really started to sink in. New message. I don't run away from my disease, but I don't want it to be kind of who I am and who I'm, what I'm defined by. You know, it already affects me every single day of my life and I just don't want to spend my time focusing on the disease. I want to do other things. I want to spend time with my kids, my family, uh, accomplish my goals at work and other parts of my life. Bob has been a role model to me and he's been an inspiration to me because he's such a wonderful man and they're such a wonderful family that I can't stand the thought I can't stand the thought that there's nothing we can do. For me, the most important and lasting impact is them saying, you know, you're not alone in this, Bob. We're going to kind of um, um, uh, kind of join you and, and take this on. It means a lot to me. Um, and not just for Bob, just because I've learned how horrible this disease is, you know. There's, there's no better treatment than when Lou Gehrig was diagnosed with it 70 years ago. And I, you know, I can't stand for that. There, someone has to start speaking out for ALS and people need to be aware of what it really means and what happens to people with ALS. And so it was kind of a no-brainer for me, you know, that it, it made me even more determined to raise money for ALS and awareness. I, I think what it's meant is, uh, is that uh, I'm not alone in this and uh, uh, you know there are definitely days that are not so easy and I may feel a bit alone but um, all I have to do is think about the swimmers, about 
um, the folks who run the HOA3, my extended family and others, and say, you know, uh, uh, it's not fun having this disease, but I'm so fortunate to, um, uh, to have the to have all the help that I that I do. If we want a role model or want to look towards someone dealing with a bad situation in a, in a positive way, Amanda's it. Four months from the swim date, Amanda gets some horrible news. After training incredibly hard to help fight against ALS, her focus would have to switch to another disease, breast cancer. It was unreal when she told me she had cancer. I knew that she had found a lump and I knew that she had seen the doctor about it and that she'd had a biopsy done, but I still didn't think that it would actually be cancer. Getting through something like a diagnosis of cancer is your emotional and mental well-being, uh, not just physical, and swimming makes me happy. Amanda, determined to stay positive and complete the swim, vowed to train through her treatments finishing her last dose of chemotherapy just days before heading out for England. I try to get excited because it's the last one, but I can't help but get pretty nervous and upset. Is today your last day? Yes. yes. It is? Yes. Awesome. I I, I'm a little anxious because I'm waiting for the drugs to get in and I have to sit here for a few hours and so I try not to think about it, try not to think about it. That's why I bring Bethany with me because she can talk and talk and so she just keeps my mind on other topics. <laughs> This swim really was perfect timing because it allowed me to be inspired by something greater than just something I was going through and help other people at the same time. And it made the cancer seem so small and insignificant. You know, I think I, at one point I was thinking of t-shirts <laughs> and I said to Todd that it occurred to me that, you know, what I would say to cancer is, you know, you might think that I'm your victim, but you're mine. And that's sort of what I've been trying to think about through the whole way, is that it's not going to control my life. It's not going to change what I do or who I am. It may slow me down and make me feel pretty nasty, but it's not going to stop me. And Amanda will not say it herself, but she certainly is a role model. First of all, I think one of the things that makes Amanda inspiring is the fact that she doesn't want to be inspirational and to see her strength to just take this head on. It's a strange thing because I've had people, a lot, quite a few people talk to me about how inspirational it's been. And it's hard for me to see that because I don't feel like I'm doing anything special. It's, I really wanted to swim the English Channel. I really wanted to raise money and awareness of her ALS, and that's what I'm doing. Well, she doesn't want to be defined by cancer, and um, I can see not wanting to be defined that way as well. She'd much rather be defined by her training and her swimming and her being a wonderful friend and mother, but it's inspiring to see that it's possible to keep living your life and keep living your dreams even as you're going through something as horrific as chemo. My kids aren't going to be scared of cancer. They're gonna think you swim the English Channel when you have cancer. And what a gift that is for all of our kids to see that. I really, I really liked all five of the other women before we started, but I really have grown to love them. You know, especially after my cancer diagnosis, they've been amazing and, and they never, never showed any kind of pity or let me feel like I was weak. Um, not for a moment, and that was very important to me. Her teammates are incredibly supportive of Amanda, unless they're talking about their alma maters. It's awesome that we've got some, you know, so many Michigan connections on my relay team, so it makes it fun for all of us, you know. Um, I am so proud of being a Spartan. You know, it's, I mean, good for her. You rarely see Spartans accomplishing much, so it's really nice to see them excel at something. So it's a rarity, but it's good. <laughs> it's hard living behind enemy lines. It really is. It's a challenge. And just when I, you know, think that I'm starting to, you know, get comfortable with it, 
They do something that, you know, makes my green blood boil. I think that Amanda takes a lot of pride in, in having gone to Michigan State, and Jenny takes a lot of pride in having gone to the University of Michigan. And the two of them seem to, uh, you know, agree to disagree on that point, um, but they both managed to wear their parkas of their school. I met my husband at U of M. When my kids are sick, they go to U of M. I work at U of M. I don't really think about other colleges. <laughs> I spend a lot of time thinking about Michigan. <laughs> well, I grew up in Ohio. All my family is Ohio State fans. Some of my family went to Michigan State or Michigan State fans, so I'm the only Michigan fan in a family of about 40, and so I know what it's like to be in enemy territory. You know what? I know I like to say that I live behind enemy lines, but Ann Arbor is a wonderful community. All the people that have come out to help with our swim, it's really been astounding to me. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful community, even though U of M is here. <laughs> Actually, I think it's been, it's been a fun connection to talk about and raise each other a little bit about, uh, but it also, I think it's a great, uh, great example of cross-university collaborations. Oh, absolutely, and it's, it's mostly just funny, especially, you know, when Amanda's right there and I know she's so passionate. If Amanda is a typical, typical Spartan, there is definitely a Spartan whelm. Whether she was born with it, the Spartans uh, developed it, or a bit of both, uh, I don't care, but uh, she has the will and uh, there's no question about it. Yeah, we like to joke, you know, with especially Jenny and I with Michigan and Michigan State and Melissa gets in there too, but it, it so wasn't about that. It was so much more than that and it was be we became a family. Only being able to see water in all directions can start to wear on a person. Spirits are lifted when they start to see land in the distance. We're near France. We're near France. We can see France now. Woo! And we saw a dolphin. Flipper would be cool. And I asked, and he's like, nah, just a bunch of boulders. You're better off going where there's rocks and no water by you. Whatever. That's what the captain, Lance, actually said. He said, get out and then turn around and get, as soon as you hear the horn, get right back in. Um, I got in and I just booked it for those rocks. Woo! And, um, climbed over them until there was no water and I stood up and I just put my arms above my head and said, all right, I've got to get back in and, and swam back to the boat. We're all at the, on the boat yelling, go, come on, stop cheering, like we got to get on. Get going! Get on but it was very okay. slippery and, and, uh, and rough. I mean, I, I have like little, little cuts on my hands and, and all over me actually from falling on them and I wouldn't trade it, don't get me wrong, but it, it, was, it was a little nerve-wracking climbing over it quickly to get in and get going again. One, one of my goals here is I just wanted to make it to France. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's like, okay, check that one off the list. And it was, it was motivating to see that we were halfway. A little daunting to think we were only halfway, but, um, but it, was, it was really neat to see her do that. Halfway there, well ahead of the world record pace, the team sets their sights back on Dover, England. We all grew up swimmers. We've all been swimming since we were about yay big, and um, I think there's something shared among swimmers. I definitely felt a, a sense of team and a sense of support, and, and that's been one of the uh, great things about this. A certain way we have been a team from the beginning, uh, but I think doing the swim and really supporting each other through the swim is going to help us um, uh, kind of come together even more. I guess in some small way I feel part of the team. Uh, if it was an impetus to them for them to do it, but in a very, very, very small way. I wasn't out there training at four o'clock in the morning. I wasn't out there swimming in Lake Michigan when it was 60, 65 degrees. I wasn't on the boat getting sick in the US Channel. I was sitting, having a nice dinner in Hilton Head. Oh, he's so much more than a teeny part of the team. I hope he really feels that he's, he's sort of the foundation of the team. Yeah, I, I don't think we would have had the same conviction 
without Bob. And he's a, he's a huge part of the team. Five. Go in the water. This team always wanted the experience of swimming the channel. However, the actual experience turned out to be a little different than what they'd expected. Even when we were on the boat, I had imagined it where we'd all be kind of sitting around together while one was swimming, and we'd be sharing stories, and it'd be a real enjoyable experience. And it was so far from that, you know? It was so miserable and kind of isolating, you know? You were just kind of on your own trying to make it through to the next time you had to swim. We're out in the middle of the ocean where you can't see land in any direction. You look everywhere, and there's no land, and you can't complain because everybody's going through it. Probably the longest, hardest, entire day of my life. It was so, yes. to me it was so lonely. And I wish I had known just how many people were watching us and just how excited they all were. They were making the swim. We were uh, at a family reunion in Hilton Head, South Carolina. About 40 of us were there. Actually, I had my iPad kept refreshing to kind of follow the tracker. Because we really thought no texting was happening because mine nor Susan's phones were working on the boat. And so it was thrilling for us to find out how excited everyone was. And My parents were very excited. Apparently, um, they, were, they weren't letting anyone leave the house until it was all over. She, my mother was pacing the kitchen. It was, it was just great to, to know how many people were out there rooting us on. With England now in sight and people around the world watching GPS and Twitter updates, darkness rolls in. The team gives it their all. However, their lead on the world record is slipping away. Their lead is merely minutes. Early on, Lance got really excited and he thought we would break, like smash the record. But when we got near the end and he was explaining to me about that if our swimmer is going two knots an hour and the current is pushing you two knots an hour, that's actually like four knots an hour, but it's at a diagonal. And he said, yeah, whoever goes around this ocean liner, the next swimmer should finish. And it was me that should go around the ocean liner. And so that meant Jenny should finish. That was super exciting, but then it didn't happen. She's up front, she's up front. Everything looked, looked on track, looked like they were gonna beat it by 15, 20 minutes or so. And then the tweet stopped. And um, I did get to the ocean liner, but then Jenny didn't finish, and then Amanda didn't finish. So then it went from this like high of, wow, we're gonna do it, to oh no, we're gonna just miss it. And so for me, it was more like that Olympic swimming race where the relay team, or the IAMR, is way ahead of the previous world record yellow line, and then the yellow line keeps moving back and back and back on them, and you wonder, oh my gosh, are they gonna make it? So I knew that by a certain time, they, we need to hear from them, otherwise they, weren't gonna, they didn't make it, and we hadn't heard from them. And then about 20 minutes later, we got, uh, got the tweet, and then the confirmation uh, via telephone that they uh, had made it. And we all kind of stood up and cheered and everybody in the, at the reunion knew about it. And everybody started cheering and clapping. All of us were so excited and sort of all the pain and misery disappeared for those few minutes while we were cheering for Emily. We have a world record! Oh they won! They broke the record! Good. We're not spraying this stuff because I think right. this That's is the, the good stuff. Expensive. We're going to spray the others, right? For oh, sure, yeah. right? All right? Definitely. It was really neat to come into the harbor and have my husband there and friends there and reporters there. and. <laughs> It just seemed so exciting um, for us to finish, and so it was, it was great to, to see all those people that had supported us. It doesn't have to be pretty. And we felt like we were representing America when we broke the record because it had been held by a Mexican team, and so it was really neat to say, you know, we broke the record for the United States of America.
After swimming the channel, the tradition is to visit the White Horse Pub in Dover. What makes this place special? It's not the drinks nor the fare, but rather the walls. To be able to sign the wall, you have to swim the channel. That's the only criteria. You have to start and finish and, and swim the channel. Our captain, uh, Lance, said, I need to give you these official papers so you can take them to the White Horse and have proof that you actually did finish and that you're eligible to sign the walls. That was a really cool part of the experience because you go in and you see all the names and all the you know drawings people put. That was really cool to be part of the history and the tradition of completing the channel and the fact that we got to write world record, um, that was awesome. And um, yeah, writing our names on that wall and becoming part of history, pretty cool. You know, it was a once in a lifetime experience. I look forward to going to that pub someday and seeing, seeing the writing on the wall. Oh, hey. <laughs> I think what I loved most about the pub was when we FaceTimed with Bob and Gretchen. That, and that really stands out from everything we did, that stands out in my mind. I don't know if it's because my last thoughts of swimming in that water was about Bob, and then to be able to share whatever our experience was with him so soon afterwards, it was, that was really special to me. It was great to see their smiles and, uh, and start to hear uh, some of the stories. So uh, a great evening we'll never forget. After training for two years, swimming the English Channel, breaking the world record, these women returned to their normal lives. I had not thought about re-entry, but it was tough. I really missed my teammates. I, I got used to having them around me all the time. It's a little surreal for me that we actually did it. We had talked about it for so long that the being there and actually getting it done, um, it was like, okay, now it's here. Just yesterday, somebody said, so what's next? What, what's next on your list? And I don't have anything next. Um, I spend a lot of time with my kids. I mean, I, I missed my kids and my husband so much during that trip that it has been so wonderful to be back with them and spend time with them and spend time with my parents. And um, I'm really, I have this newfound appreciation for my family. Okay. Yeah, did you know that? Not just the swim itself, but the preparation that it was needed to do what they did is amazing. So my daughters, uh, who are you know, in seventh and ninth grade, they see these women did this. Um, I think it's great for them. It's great to see these women who, you know, they are terrific mothers and supportive, uh, important parts of their families, their accomplishments okay, in their careers, and they can perform athletically on a really, really high level. I mean, I truly hope that my daughter sees this and realizes there's anything out there that she wants to do, she can. She can accomplish anything. I hope any little girl sees that. That would be huge. I want to uh, look back and know that we, we did what we could. And so we, we took a stand and we, we did something that made a positive impact on that horrible disease. You know, every couple of days I hear from somebody who um, has first learned of the effort and they're amazed at, at the effort that, uh, that the woman made. So it's uh, uh, um, given me kind of strength and energy every single day. We're all sort of doing our own thing, but I think that we'll forever have this bond that we formed by doing the swim together. I think that will always be special for all of us. Be an experience like no other, and the six of us will share something that no one else will ever truly, really understand. Certainly I uh, don't wish, and probably will never wish that I had this disease, but if it can lead to a good outcome like that, where this group of uh, swimmers have developed a bond that will be a lasting for them, and help them achieve an accomplishment that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise. You know, that's a good thing. And we look for um, uh, good things to come out of bad circumstances. And so that's, you know, that's, that's wonderful that that has happened. It certainly makes me feel good.
Yeah, writing our names on that wall and becoming part of history, pretty cool. And I think they even took down a calendar. <laughs> oh, well, we were joking. The only reason we got that much space was because we had a camera crew with us. <laughs> so that was good. Just, I just couldn't believe I was in the English Channel looking at cruise liners in the dark. Um, it was really inspiring. After that, it was not as fun. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And nationalities? All USA. All USA. So what, you thought this would be easier than the Olympics or something, did you? Slightly. Yeah. Uh, you, I don't, not you wrong. <laughs> and then at France, you know, she took, you know, what was it, 30 seconds longer, if that. But she was so convinced that if we didn't get the world record, it was going to be her fault. And, you know, we told her we would have blamed her no matter what. So.